Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video we're going to be creating some snowflakes. This tutorial will be a quick and fun one and I've made quite a number of holiday themed tutorials so I'll put all of them in the playlist and you can check it out if you are interested. Let's start by creating a grid of ellipses and I'm going to declare a variable. Let's do num, set it to how about 10 and then let's set size to be equals to width divided by num. So this way we can just change the number instead of the size to get the specific number of ellipses that we want. And then inside draw, I'm going to create a nested for a loop. Goes from i equals to zero, i less than num, then i plus plus. Same thing for j, j less than num, and then j plus plus. All right, and then to draw an ellipse, we're gonna use an ellipse function, and we're gonna provide the x and y coordinate of the center of the circle. And I'm gonna put x and y for now, but we'll calculate what those are. And then for size, it's going to be size and size. So for x, it's going to be i times size, right? We want to space them out evenly. Same thing for y, it's going to be j times size. All right, let's click run. Okay, so as you can see here, we need to offset it a little bit to the right and then a little bit down. And the exact amount is size divided by two. Okay, and then now if you change the number here, you can get a set of circles that you want. Next, I'm going to do two things. So first, how about I set the stroke to be no stroke here. And then I'm going to fill in the color. Let's just do, how about red? And I, actually let's set the background to black. I want to add a margin. So how about we declare margin? Let's set it to 30. So I want a margin to be 15 on each side here. So what we need to do is instead of just doing size equals to width divided by num, we just need to subtract width here by margin times two. If I click run, it doesn't work yet because we also need to offset it from the X and Y location here. Perfect, and now you can change the margin size as well. All right, I'm gonna keep it at 30. Next, we're gonna be creating some snowflakes patterns based on some sort of equation. And that equation is, you can basically experiment with the equations that you want, but I'll show you the exact one that I have used. First, I'm going to calculate a distance between the X and Y coordinates here from the center. So I can actually, how about I declare this variable called dist from center. And to get the distance, we can use a function called dist that takes in a total of four arguments, the x and y coordinates of the two points where we want to find the distance in between. So it's going to be between x and y, and then the center of the canvas, which is width divided by two, and then height divided by two. And the equation that I want to use is actually going to be based off of the distance from center here to the power of something. So how about I set a scaled factor to be, let's say, five. Actually, I'm going to put this outside here. Let's start with one, actually. And then we're going to set, how about I call it scale distance, and it is going to be distance from center to the power of scaled factor. Actually, just do scale factor. And we can use a function called pow, which takes in two arguments. The first one is the base, which is going to be dist from center. And the second argument is going to be the power that we want to raise dist from center to. So it's going to be scale factor. And if I print out scale distant, actually also, um, let's decrease this to five. So you can see, 
right now the numbers is not that large because it's basically it's just distance from center right because we raise it to the power of one but if i change the scale here let's say to two then the number gets much much bigger and so we're going to be playing around with the scale factor here but because the number is so large, what I want to do is that I actually want to map it to the color to get these sort of periodic or oscillating set of patterns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually first, let's set the color palette. I'm going to call it snow palette, and it's going to be these colors. There are a total of eight colors here. And then... I'm going to declare a variable called index and index is going to be mapped between scale distance that we calculated here that goes between zero to a certain distance and how about I call it band and let's set let's set band to a constant let's do 100 and we're going to scale between zero and the length of the snow palette here. So snow palette dot length. And let's just try to print out what index is. Okay, so now the index is super large, right? So two things we need to do. First, I want it to be an integer. So I'm going to use the function floor to change from these decimal numbers to floor, to, to use the function floor to change it to integers. But then right now, the range is still very, very big, right? Because zero to band is basically between zero to 100 but the scale distance is between zero to a very large number. So what I want to do next is I want to set another variable, let's call it color index, and we're gonna use an expression called modulo to wrap around the number. And modulo is an expression that returns the remainder between a division of two numbers. And because it returns the remainders between two numbers, the range of the numbers that is returned, it will never go past the denominator of the division, right? So actually, let me show you. So let's say that we have a color palette with the length of eight, right? So what we want to do is we want to get an index value. So the index variable that we just had right now had a value that was just really big but we want it to have a range between zero and seven so that we can eventually pull the color off of the snow palette color right and the index that we want would be between zero and seven so what we can do is we can actually just use the modulus expression to return those values so if we do let's say nine mod color palette length right we get a return value of one and that is because eight goes into nine one time with a remainder of one and so if we do 10 then we get two if we do eight we get zero and if we do seven we get seven so by doing the number mod the length of the color palette here then we get a range of value that is between zero and seven and then that's how we're going to be pulling the color off of this color palette so color index will be equals to index which is which are these very big number mod color no snow palette dot length right now if i print index and color index you can see that the color index will only go up to seven. Perfect. And then now instead of filling it with red, we're gonna fill it with snow palette of color index. And then we don't need this. Oops. 
Yay! Okay, I actually want this to be a blue background. And how about we change the number back to, let's do 30. Nice. So what if we do a scale factor of 1? You can see a bunch of circles here because the number is just based on the distance from the center, right? But then now if we change the numbers to a different cool scale, then you get cool patterns. And it doesn't have to only be an integer. You can do a decimal like this too, right? All right, so the last part is that instead of changing the numbers here, I want to create some sort of a UI or user interface. Specifically, we're going to be creating two things, a slider and a save button. So let's start by declaring scale slider. To create the slider, all we need to do is set this variable to a function called create slider. And we need to provide it at least two arguments. The first two are going to be the minimum and the maximum range of the slider that we want. So let's say we do one and five, but we can provide more arguments. The third one is going to be the starting value that we want to provide. The starting, yeah, the starting value. So let's say we want to start at two. And then the fourth one is the increment at which we want the slider to have. So let's do one. So it will go from one, two, three, four, and five, right? And then now inside here, to actually access the slider values here. Actually, let's just click run first. All right, so we have a slider here. We can get the value of the slider by calling scale slider dot value. And if you look here, it starts at two. We can go to one, then we can go up to five, right? But right now, the value here doesn't do anything with the image. So we actually want to set it to be the scale factor here, right? So all we need to do is to set scale factor to be equal to this. All right. Two. All right. And now the pattern changes. Looks pretty nice. And then the last part is we want to create a save button. And we can create a button using a very similar method. So we're going to set it to create button. And then inside here, if I click run, let's see what it happens. It said undefined. So we actually want to give an argument of what the name that we want to put on top of this button to be, I'm going to put in as safe designed. And it's nice here because the location of the safe design button is right next to the slider, but we actually can set the position by doing scale slider dot position and then provide the X and Y coordinate. How about we do 10 comma height plus 10. All right, and by providing this, now the safe design is not where we want. So we can do the same thing, save button dot position. And let's do it at, how about we do it at 220 and then height plus 10. And the reason I do 220 is because I also want to set the scale slider size. And I want the size to be 200. All right, so you can play around with styling here. The last thing before we move to the save button, I actually want to change the arguments here. And I want it to be between 1.5 and 2.5. <laughs> I'm just playing around now. but And I want the increment to be 0 0.1. OK. <laughs> All right, let's work with the safety sign button. So what we can do is right now when we click the safety sign button, it doesn't do anything yet, right? What we want is that when we click the button, we want it to save the image. So how I'm going to approach that is that we're going to have it call 
a function. So let's do save button dot mouse pressed. And then the function that it's going to call is going to be called, how about just save designed. And right now, if I click run, it gives an error because there's no save design function. So we just need to write this function here, function save design. And how about we just print out the word save when we click it just to make sure that it works. Save, 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 save. Perfect. And actually, it's so easy to save the canvas image here. We can just use the function called save canvas. So let's just do save canvas. And if we don't provide any argument here, what it does is that it saves an image as a PNG. So let's try that. Save designed. But the name is untitled. So what we want to do is we want to give the name. How about we do Snowflake? And then now we have a file that is named snowflake.png. But also, if you want it to have a different file type, you can provide, for example, you can do JPEG. Click Run. And then now you have snowflake.jpg. And then you, as you can see, we got the snowflake.png for the previous one. All right, so that's it for this video. This is actually going to be the last tutorial for 2024. Happy holidays, everyone. I look forward to spending more coding time with you in 2025. Give this one a try.